hello hello i am back with another video and today i wanted to talk about you look good in the hood <laughs> now before i begin this video this video is from my heart to yours this video is um talking about something that we need to heal from in the black community and i'm talking to black women because those are the women who i resonate with those are the women that I um, talk to and, and know and, and consult with and understand because I am a black woman. I can't speak about other cultures, other people, other frequency of beings. I resonate with this frequency. So this is what I want to talk about. Talk about what I know. <laughs> so... I want to talk about this here because I feel as though a lot of black women in, you know, that, that are close to me along their journey or in denial in some areas of their life. And as far as relationships, this is not no spiritual video here. We talking straight physical here. We talking about with these two eyes. I understand about meditating. I understand and I teach. To love yourself and to pamper yourself and in and and, and, <laughs> and value yourself and, and speak affirmations to yourself. I understand that spiritual side of it, but there's two sides, you know, every you know, it's it, it starts on the spiritual side, but there is manifest manifestation. Things do come forth in physical. And we came forth looking a certain way, being programmed to certain thoughts. And we get to a certain age in our physical reality where we just believe that wholeheartedly. And there are some people, some women who believe that their thought of themselves is like maybe a, a nine or a ten as far as looks as far as attitude, as far as health, as far as being that bad chick is concerned. And maybe it is simply because, well, I I would think, just, just me throwing out my opinion here, I would think it's simply because maybe men, the sweet talking men have said this over and over and over again to every woman how fine and beautiful she is because see this is how men <laughs> seduce women because they seduce them with the words and he then told these women over and over again that you know she's the baddest chick or whatever and she believes this wholeheartedly and it gets to a point where years she could have possibly been a bad chick in the hood. She could have possibly been a bad chick up in her high school. She could have possibly been a bad chick when she was a teenager. But as years go on, she's 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, she still holds that bad chick mentality, but <laughs> she's losing her youth and, and other women are evolving and she's still maybe wearing stacks or she still have the jerry curl or she still you know dressed in a certain way or she still have the attitude and she's maybe gained some weight and maybe she's put on years but in her mind she's still a bad chick and this is why i want to name this video you look good for the hood because in the hood they might have this chick who is the baddest, the finest, the cutest in her hood. But you take that same chick out of that hood, you take her to maybe, you know, a, a country club or take her where there are um, high status men or just more, uh, <laughs> more girly, more feminine women. And she sticks out like a sore thumb. And so this is just my opinion. And I'm not saying I'm a 10 or a 9. I am not the prettiest woman in the world. I'm not. I am. <laughs> I am a woman, though, that has worked upon her issues, though. 
Like a lot of, uh, that's another thing too, a lot of black women, we have had some type of issues with men that we don't want to deal with. You know, I wrote a book about my issues that I've healed from. But a lot of women, black women, not trying to heal from little girl not having her daddy or being molested at a young age by somebody in the family or trying to achieve in corporate America and getting stumped on because it's not a place <laughs> for really women. It's really masculine energy there. But always trying to fight and get me in uh, survival mode and and sometimes life just give us this 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 um <laughs> this 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 setting and we just have to become that actor and we have to assume roles that are masculine energy roles i understand that but but it, it 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 allows for us to lose that feminine essence, that vulnerability, and and then we gather up this fear and all of these layers and these barriers around our heart, and now we can't and don't know how to be a woman anymore. I'm saying all of this because of this here, because of the simple fact that. There's a man, a black man, that we'll call Tyrone. Let's call him Tyrone. Tyrone. Tyrone is um. He's cool, you know. He when he was in the hood, he wore his white T-shirt and his Tims. He had that swag <laughs> that women like, you know, that bad boy mentality. But he was headstrong, always was. He was driven, and in his heart, he was a man, even at his lower self. Striving to be a better man, a provider, a protector, a leader, you know? And so he evolves in his life. And he leaves the hood, and he goes off to college, and he gets his degree, and he lands his, this high status job and not to Rome is looking for a woman but here's the thing Tyrone's mindset has changed Tyrone ain't wearing no Tims no more and no T's but he's still cool though he have his swag but he's professional now he he's a grown man But he looks back in the hood for a woman. But this time, he's not looking for the same type of woman. He looking in the hood, cause that's what, you know, that's what a, that's what a black women are. You know, the women that, that look like him and, 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 and should be vibrating on the frequency of him and complimenting him, you know, making him look good wherever he go. And so he looks back in the hood. And so now the type of woman that he wants is not going to be that bad chick that was in the hood when he left. You know, um, because now he has a little bit more requirements. Now to him, he wants someone who is my, maybe health conscious because along his journey, He's realized now that um, his health is his wealth. But when he looks back in the hood, the hood chicks are still eating the chitlins and the poke chops and the sticks. And, 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 and he, so he's like, maybe, maybe, maybe we're going to have a little conflict there because now my health is my wealth. So, okay, that's going to ax out a whole lot of the women in the hood. And then he says, well, let me look for somebody that's not really... Um, just trying to find a bag and don't have anything of value, whether it is mental, whether she has <laughs> passions of her own. Let me see if I can find someone of value in the hood. Well, no, everybody in the hood, you know, they, 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 they just 
trying to make it to Friday, you know, you know, no, no passions just yet. All the women, they not just there just yet, you know, and, um, Let me look in the hood, he says. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to look in the hood for somebody, you know, that can compliment me and make me look good when I go to the, you know, the board meetings and conferences and, you know, when I travel and and I'm meeting, you know, the spouses of, of my colleagues and she could fit in. She could fit in really good with them. She knows how to speak. She she has that look. You know, she, she knows how to... Be quiet <laughs> too you know so let me look in the hood for that but oh nope the hood checks are grabbing the wall Oop. so now Tyrone may come to a pivotal moment in his life where he no longer is looking in the hood he's no longer looking for the black woman because she acts out She's exed out. I know I'm going to lose some people for this video, from making this video and speaking this truth, because I know how <laughs> some women are. But I told you this channel is about evolving and, and, and saying hello fear, you know, facing those fears and allowing you to be accountable for you. We're not going to blame Tyrone because nobody in the hood can meet him where he was. Nobody in the hood was evolving. So he had to leave him behind. And so the same women in the hood would tell Tyrone, he's a traitor. Look at him. He's a traitor. Is he really a traitor? Or did you betray, betray Tyrone? It's all about how you look at it. And so, I want to talk about these issues that we have as black women. And the first issue being that we are so wounded with, with, with racism, with daddy issues, with masculine energy that we exude, that we don't know how to be vulnerable don't know how to be submissive. The first and foremost thing that I want to say to black women is many of us need therapy. <laughs> many of us. I'm not saying all, but many. And I'll be the first to admit in my life I became accountable for my behavior. That's the only way that I was able to evolve. To be accountable. To face my truth. I didn't necessarily go see a therapist. But I saw myself. I dealt with myself. And my fears. And my little girl issues. And, and my masculine energy. And I found a place where I fit in that felt good, you know? So the next thing besides therapy I want to ask you all black women is, do you like being a feminine woman? Do you? Do you ever want to be one? Do you ever just want to just sit down and just look beautiful and and be submissive and and know that your man is the man and he's providing and leading and I, I think it's fun being feminine I think it's fun being <laughs> submissive I think well I know rather that that is where our power is let me give you an example of this because, see, a lot of women think this is weak and, and we are so busy trying to be strong women, but being strong is masculine energy. Shh. Shh. So let me break this down in an example. Let's say, for example, I have um, the 
fiance. I have a fiance, and we are about to buy a house, and we're building and getting, you know, credit together. Whatever you do around the house, buying time. We're so youthful, and I. I have a good job, so I got a little bonus, so I, I have some extra money we could put down on the house. We put down on the house, and um, and so when I put down on the house with him, you know, we're we're team. So if I am in my masculine energy still, now it is my house. You know, because anytime we put down something, just a little bit on it is ours. It's my house, and I have some this this arrogance about it being my house. Mm -hmm. And I wish you would come in my house this time of night. You need to let me know where you're going when you leave this house, you know? Because we worked <laughs> and put forth. Provided, you know, it was in the masculine energy role. But let me show you the same type scenario, but different energies. So now let's say I am engaged to get married to this man who is a provider. <laughs> this is where I want, I want to show you about this, this submissiveness provider and he uh, he puts down everything for the house and told us okay babe just trust told me rather just babe just trust me on this I found this great house I know you'll love it you know it's everything that you said that you wanted plus what I wanted let's go check it out I check it out with him and I'm like oh my god Gosh, it's the closet that I wanted, the kitchen, the bathroom. I love it, babe. Yes, I love it. I'm so proud of you. I'm so thankful for you being a great provider and a great leader. And so now, instead of saying, just generally speaking, this is my house, Maybe generally speaking, I would say, my husband worked hard to get this house for us. I'm so thankful that, that I was able to experience a husband that took me from here and brought me there. And so this is not my house. This is now our house. And he's leading our house. And so as a woman, you can be submissive to that type of leader because you're letting him lead. You're trusting him to lead. Now I get it, a lot of us aren't in positions where we meet men like that. But I mentioned that example because maybe if you start acting, not you, no, that was harsh. Maybe, excuse that, maybe if we, including me too, start acting like that, and then the universe yield to us that type of masculine energy. Now I'm gonna go spiritual just for a second here. Maybe if we are the feminine, then the universe will yield to us the masculine. Because the law of gender says there must be male and there must be female. 
So if we get on the right frequency here, maybe that's enough to create a paradigm shift for us. I don't know what you think. The deal is, I hear women say the terms leveling up and going to get the bag and uh, and I know I'm the S-H-I-T and, and I hear him say that but are we? and I'm saying we I'm going to include me in that too are we? are we all that? for Tyrone not that we want to all just live up to Tyrone expectations but are we at least stepping up to our higher self, though? Are we evolving or are we getting left behind? And this is beyond looking, beyond big asses. This has to do with aura, too. It has to do with feminine energy. But let's start with the look. Are we even wearing makeup? I know that was a moment in my journey where I always said, I'm, I'm guilty. I am so guilty here. Yeah. But as I grow in this channel, I want you to grow too. There was a moment in my journey where I was like, I believe in natural beauty. I knew in my heart that I wasn't ugly. But I, I wasn't wearing makeup on purpose. For a long time. And then when I decided to work on myself on purpose, I wanted to work on my inner man first. On purpose. I wanted to deal with that little girl issue and my personal aura on purpose. But then after I dealt with all of that, I graduated and I started dealing with my health. And I started dealing with my attitude. I was handling the layer after layer, my attitude. Then I finally, finally put the makeup on. Finally started looking different because I was tired of the same look on me, not for other people, on me. And so I started to change the look. And so I did all of this here for myself initially but let's talk about others here do the women that you know or maybe you're guilty of it because I once was that say they are nine or ten do they wear makeup wait 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 let's go further have they dealt with their therapy inner girl issues do they wear makeup to enhance their beauty? Do they work out or, or or do they just cover up those insecurities with the makeup and with the fake hair and tore up on the inside still? You see, that was big for me. I didn't want to be walking around here made up on the outside and tore up on my inside. Because I always knew that that inner core strength was important. Whether we're talking about working out physically or we're talking about working on ourselves spiritually, that inner core huh, is the most important. So that's what we have. We have some women who think that they are nines and tens. And their inner core is tore up. But they actually believe that they are going to get some kind of bag. They actually believe that they are the S-H-I-T with the attitude, with the masculine energy, with being obese, with being no longer in their 20s, 
and wit being those inner core little girl secretly hating men issues. And that, my dear, is not going to fly with Tyrone. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you this question. And this is a serious question. Don't think I'm being ugly here. Do you like black men? Do you? That is such a serious question from my heart to yours because I love me some black men. I loved Jerome when he was in the hood with his white tee and his tail. I loved Tyrone on his journey when he went to college and leveled up mentally. I loved Tyrone to the core. The simple fact that he remembered who he was as a black man. I love the simple fact that Tyrone came or considered coming to the hood to look for someone like me, but she could not be found. <laughs> I love the fact that Tyrone evolved and became an entrepreneur and just decided to find someone that compliments him where he is, no matter what color her skin he is. Because I love the fact that if Tyrone is happy, I am happy. If Tyrone is happy, I am happy. So here's the thing. When you don't love black like men shows, it shows. It shows up in your, your dating life. It shows up in your resentment toward them with little issues. It, it shows up in the fact that you don't trust him. It shows up because you still have those issues that you never dealt with. Now you can't trust nobody. Now you can't be submissive to nobody because you think that they gonna hurt you. You think they're going to leave you. You think they're going to beat you. You think they're going to cheat on you. You think all kind of crazy things. All kind of things be going on in your mental. So, it is not stupid to be in the submissive role. It is the correct order for the divine feminine. It is the correct order of things. And I'm hopeful that this video could touch somebody, one of my reflections. You know, I'm over the fact that I'll probably lose subscribers from the way that I'm changing this channel. I'm over that. You can go. <laughs> you could <can> depart. <laughs> but the show must go on. But we must keep evolving in every area of our, of our lives. I have experienced being with women who I shut my mouth but and this was not judgmental it was just so shocking to witness them say how amazing they are and I would think to myself I wonder what the men think about that I mean just in great denial of their physical, their mental, didn't do no kind of work and just thinking then God's gift to the world.
and seems like a lot of us women need a reality check, including me once upon a time in my life. Because they have women in the physical that will give you one. <laughs> they have women that will give you one. Everybody not like me and just to just, you know, let you do your thing, you know, in the physical. They got some women out there that will tell you you don't belong. Matter of fact, I, I want to share this with you and then, then I'm going to wrap this up. I went, I went to this high class area, so to speak, and I just don't want to share where I was. Anyway, and I invited one of my girlfriends and in this particular um, place, they had this uh, restaurant, right? At this restaurant there that I wanted to meet her at I hadn't talked to my girlfriend for a while because we were doing you know the COVID social distancing thing and and on the phone well I hadn't seen her rather but on the phone we were talking about you know you know adoring ourselves you know and I was just on a journey where I was telling her you know how I was tired of my hair and I'm gonna do my makeup different da, 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 da. and she was saying the same thing right she was saying the same thing that she was doing on her end and I'm like okay we you know we're on the same frequency here so that's that's beautiful and so I said well meet me at such and such restaurant we're gonna go in and just have lunch there because in this particular place I had met you know some really um, like-minded people and it was a great place for networking and you know just just hanging out socializing and so she was so eager from the stories that I had told her she went into the restaurant before I got there and I mind you I'm right down the street I'm next to her wait for me she could have went She went in, and it was two sides to this restaurant, and she went in and sat on the side that I really didn't want to, you know, hang at. So I went in the side where I wanted to go at, and I looked for her, and she wasn't there. And so then I went to the other side, and sure enough, she was sitting there at a table. And I kind of like said, hey, and she got up and she began to walk towards me and I sort of, you know, trying to meet her halfway. In the halfway mark, there was a table and it was a couple, a woman and a man, a white woman and man sitting at this table. And the woman back was to me. And so she saw the my friend getting up. And she asked her, she said to her, um, you must be lost, right? You clearly don't belong here. And my friend just stood up there like she had this look. I uh, like, I don't know. And she, cause she see me coming and I didn't hear this comment at all. And I'm like, girl, come on, you're on the wrong side. But when I got closer to the couple, the man saw me and he was smiling at me and the woman turned around and she smiled at me and she's, you know, vigorously waving her hand. And I'm like, hey, how are you? And I, and I told my friend, I was like, oh, everybody's so nice here. And she said, really? Because I think that that lady just insulted me. And I was like, girl, no. And so we sat down and she told me what the lady had told her and I didn't hear it. And I was like, really she told you that and while she was speaking to me I was closer to her and I saw maybe what she didn't see and maybe what that couple did see that her physical really did say she didn't belong and she went on to talk about, you know, the men that were in the room and how they were looking at her and wanting her. 
And I was looking at her and I said, you know what? Let's just enjoy the moment and not give energy to that. So how's everything going with you? You know, cause I just really want to have a good time. But I'm saying that to say, some of us women be in this delusional bubble that needs to be popped so that we can hold on our face. <laughs> I don't mean that in an ugly way because you know we still have legs and we can get up off our ways and wipe our ways off and do better and evolve but just get out the bubble and later on that day I was like saying to myself wow I wonder where a woman would possibly get that from thinking that they are a nine or a ten when everybody on the outside look at them as if they, there is room for improvement. And the only thing I can think of is the fact that men who try <laughs> to get us on our back, maybe they try to get these women on their back by telling them how fine they are and how beautiful they are. And it went to their heads. And it stayed there for years. See, women, we'll hold on to what men say to us. This is this is this is how we fall so deep in love with them. But based upon what they say, you know, I don't want to be like, he told me, he told me that he loved me. He told me he was gonna marry me. He told me that I was the one. He told me that he would never da da da. -da. It'd be all talk, but he never really showed. <laughs> that boy. He ain't showed nothing. He just told you. I encourage you, us. I'm sorry, I go with thank you. I encourage us to get therapy. I encourage us to work on our health. I encourage us to adorn ourselves and look beautiful. I encourage us to learn what it means to be a feminine, submissive woman to a masculine man. I encourage us to stay off of our back. Mm -hmm. Stop bringing all those human beings in through that vagina. I encourage us to get a passion, something that we love. I encourage us to make our health, our wealth. And the reason why I encourage us to do this is because I believe wholeheartedly that Tyrone is not the only black, successful man that's feeling that way. So what am I saying here to you? It's really simple. Well, the real feminine, submissive, Beautiful, <laughs> sexy, black women, please stand up. Please stand up. You've broken down and tired. This video is living life on a merry go round, and you can find Relax. the fight ahead. But I see it in you. So we gon' walk it out and move.